Philip Stoughton for EMS Now. I'm here at NEPCON Shanghai. And we're just going to have a discussion about the use of global production models for the larger EMS and OEM companies. Uh, joined by a very distinguished panel, I have Hamed from WKK. Thanks for joining me again, Hamed. Pilan from DEC and Joe from ASM Assembly Solutions, Stroke C Place. Thanks for, thanks for stopping by, guys. Um, perhaps start with, uh, with you, Joe. What we're seeing within particularly the large contract manufacturers is a, a desire to be able to NPI perhaps in Europe and then move production out here to China. And to do that, they want to have the same line. Do you see that? And how, how can you as a supplier support that? Oh, okay. I think I'm coming from a semiconductor field. Uh -huh. and this is pretty common in right. semiconductor, whereas if you compare with SMT, it's just getting there, but okay. it's not yet there. If you look at the semiconductor, you may have a formula, you may have a program, you may have almost standardized machine everywhere in the world. They mm -hmm. can do internal transfer, uh, product transfer, even equipment transfer. Okay. In the past, it's most likely uh, they put product base into different area, then they do internal, like maybe I'm doing one million a day, okay, I need to increase my capacity, I want to do two million, so they start to select which size has better, you know, yeah. capability and so on. Now the way I look at SMT is that uh, I would say automation part, comparing semiconductor equipment and SMT, I would say SMT still have a room to grow in this area. Okay. You okay. know, uh, for semiconductor, it's pretty standardized. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're working with certain yeah. IC, this yeah. is the size, this is the uh, package, how it looks like. But for SMT, you have this board, you know, yeah. this width, this length, everything is different. Yeah, more variables and I guess more players in the market exactly. as well. Yeah. And then you have supply from printing, AOI, placement, reflow, and everybody has to deal with different board. Yeah. And everything inside the board are different, so it's, it's a challenge. Different challenges. It's yeah. a big challenge. Yeah. Because you, you have to start from the equipment whereby everything must be controlled. Yeah. Uh, something like a ready position, a home position, and other yeah, things. Yeah. must be standardized. Yeah. Okay. Th that was not done in the SMT. No, no, so, quite different. So the way I see it is that uh, our customer is really looking at that. Yeah, and wanting that price. Exactly. Yeah. Given the fact that uh, today they might have to change another product, yeah. which they already have something already, let's say, running in Brazil. Yeah. Why not you port it over to Asia or yeah. something? And vice versa. Yeah. So I think okay. the trend is there. I yeah. think uh, there's a big room for the SMT supplier to yeah. how to go about it. Okay, Pilan, from your point of view, visited lots of factories in the world where I see a deck printer at the be at the beginning of a line. Um, and companies like Flextronics will have a policy where most of their lines start with a deck printer, they can move their, their printers ar around the world. That's obviously a benefit to you in those markets, but, but it, I guess it can be a barrier to entry in, a, in, other, in other customers that aren't currently deck customers. Do you, do you see that as a strategy that's, that's becoming more and more commonplace? Well, for global player particularly, uh, working with one, or in some cases two, uh, key suppliers are critical uh, because there's a lot for them to consider very much in relation to uh, the product ramp up, yeah. uh, support infrastructure uh, of the equipment that they have invested. So on those basis, to them, uh, considering one or two uh, global players are of importance to them uh, and also allow them to be able to move the machine around yeah. when the time is required. Yeah, and you have to be able to support that globally as well. Absolutely. So your network is important. And Hamad, from your point of view, again, it's, it's, it's interesting because you kind of have a, have a choice of products. And I guess to a degree it's about right-sizing the supplier with the customer to make sure, make sure the equipment matches their needs. Well, we run into pretty much the same, and I concur with uh, both the colleagues here, that you know, what we're seeing coming onto the marketplace is copy exact place to place. Yeah. It makes it easier for the manufacturer when he does service, when he does purchasing of parts and so forth. What is changing though, and I see it now within the last couple of years, is they had traditionally purchased, for example, deck printers. 
Now they're looking at cost cutting. Right. Cost cutting. So for the first time, you see multinational big boys going to Chinese manufacturers and say, okay, I want to buy reflow machines from you. I want to buy wave starting machines from you. And I want to buy them everywhere in the world. Right. Now, this is new. Okay, and the Chinese manufacturers aren't global yet. So they don't have the distribution everywhere to be able to do it. So it's a little bit of a dilemma. You know, I want to buy, for example, a Flextronics is buying a lot of local manufactured machinery, putting it into their factory here, and how do they get it to Brazil? How do they get it serviced in Brazil? That's very, very important. So this is a dilemma that's facing everybody right now. How do we do that? I don't go to Brazil. You don't go to Brazil, but you know the customer wants you to go to Brazil. Yeah. We actually have customers who've asked me, "I'm going to buy the machine from you. You go install it in Brazil." Yeah. You know, I don't have people down there, so yeah. it's uh, it's a little bit of a stretch for us. Yeah. I mean, those markets are interesting, and you know, actually, both of these guys, both of your companies, I believe, have a footprint. For example, in South America, there are there are um, production areas in the southern tip of Argentina now, where where they're they're talking about a free trade zone down there. Uh, so, so all kinds of challenges in, in terms of support of that. The one thing we are hearing about from South America, and I don't know if it's true here in China, is a desire to have a whole line solution where they can they have a, a single point of contact. Are you are you seeing much of that, Joe? We are seeing some customer, you know, asking basically total solution. Right. They want to go for one supplier. They want to call one person. They want to get everything. You know, within a call or something. Yeah. Um, I guess in the past that the way the SMP was set up, you know, you, you don't have that in place. Mm. I mean, like a lot of people using deck printer and so on. Yeah. Uh, placement of machine, different brand. And then yeah. Before, different reflow, different AI. Yeah. And then everybody was okay with that. Yeah. I totally agree with uh, gentlemen. Uh, Customer trying to get something easier. They don't want to waste too much time. Yeah. It's just that they want to focus into their product. They want to focus into uh, how they improve the efficiency and so on. Yeah. So that's that's I think uh, a lot of people are trying to push us. Yeah. And I guess Samet, from your point of view as a as a supplier of different equipment, the the, the whole line solution is is something you've been offering for a long time. We've been doing that for quite a long time because that's that's our bread and butter. Yeah. So yes, we can do that. It's hard for DEC to have a full line solution because how are they going to service a pick and place machine? To me, if, if you're putting the line solution in and you're you're putting a DEC machine in when it's a when it's appropriate, asking you know someone who makes an AOI to get involved in the print process at the opposite end of the line doesn't make sense. But I guess you guys have the holistic approach. Well, because of the fact that we sell all the various entities in the line and our engineers are schooled on how to service everything. And we have uh, engineers who are good at process to making sure that the whole process works, we can do that. Yeah. So we offer line solutions, we offer uh, the econo solution for the economic value package, and things like that. So we are offering that and have been doing that for the last eight years. Okay, and Pilan, from your point of view, as you deliver these, these, um, these same solutions everywhere in the world, is it, is it then the same, the same delivery package, the same support package everywhere in the world, or do you, do you have to adapt it locally for each, for each region? Well, for Greenfield site in particular, uh, those we can actually offer our customers a so-called total solution within the printer right. uh, itself, uh, from the machines to some of the uh, consumers that are being used within the, the machine. Uh, we, we, we focus on this area for our passenger. Yeah. Yeah. It seems to make sense to me. I mean, you know, if I'm a, if I'm a contract manufacturer, I want, I want DEC to be expert in printing. I don't want them messing around in all kinds of other areas. You, you want that focus and you want to be able to, if you need someone to bring it together, you want to be able to talk to, to someone who's got that, that supply chain expertise to do that. That seems to make sense to me. Well, guys, thanks very much for talking to me. Thanks for your time. I hope the, um, the show here is productive for you. Certainly plenty of visitors here. Plenty of noise, plenty going on. So uh, have a good show and we'll talk again soon. Thank thanks you. Thanks very much. Thank you.